Viewers, did you see? Did you see this? Did you see this guy, man? So the story broke around the weekend, and and we had decided, even though thankfully it wasn't in our flyer, we had decided that we're going to make this our first story today. It's a social interest story. So how are we going to carry out this story? We're going to carry out in this way. I'm going to talk about it, and then I'll get all the young people in the studio about. 10 people, each of them giving us an opinion. I've warned them that they have one minute each. So each of them giving us an opinion about what they think about this. Now, this is what we're going to talk about. And then, uh, so what is the story, though? Elon Musk, it was reported, says that he has created this uh, artificial lady. So it's an artificial wife. He's going to sell it for $3,400, and it's going to be in Africa in November 2023. So those who are tired of physical wives um, or tired of human beings, they can have this. So, you know, our studio has a lot of young people. So we started debating it. All sorts of strands of arguments came up. So we're going to let you hear what each of them said. Um, I didn't record it. I'm going to let them say it live so that you can hear it yourself. And then you can see how young people are thinking. Just as we were looking at the story, Nisaki comes in. Nisaki works with us here. He comes in and says that, hold on, this is a hoax. And we said, how ah, is it a hoax? He said, oh, he just found a story. It's a hoax. So we're going to start from there. And then we'll get the opinion. So when he said it's a hoax, the other people said, no, no, wait a minute. This is Elon Musk, you see. He may be testing the waters. It's not any hoax. He knows that people will react in a certain way. So he's brought it out, says it's a hoax. Let's see what people say. That's what he did with Twitter buying. I'm buying, I'm not buying, I was buying, I won't buy again, now I'll buy. Eventually he bought it. So other people said that, and I, I thought I bought into that. It kind of makes sense. So we're going to hear the opinions of our young people about this anyway. Okay, so let's take Nisaki first. Nisaki, how did you find out that this was fake? Tell us. So when you mentioned the story, it's, it's so odd to me that I haven't seen any like that on my feet. So I went to Elon Musk's Twitter and I realized he hadn't posted anything of the sort. Then I went to Google to look out, uh, look out for um, Elon Musk's robot wife. And then the results started coming in and then a whole bunch of hoax results started coming. So I read throughout the three of the articles and I realized that the story had initially come up over the weekend and one of the things that some of the sites picked up on was that the pictures of Musk that were used with the robot were different pictures. Some of them showed him having a flabby body, and some of them also showed him in a slim and more upright position. So they started doing the analysis, and then it, it turned out that the images had been generated by AI for the purpose. Okay, so do we know who is doing this? Who is, who is creating this hoax? Well, not exactly, but with the rise of all this, these AI things that are able to generate images and so on. It could be anybody sitting behind any mobile phone who has enough understanding about how to cause AI to generate images who sat behind and caused this thing to happen. It's, it's not strange. Okay, I know that you spend a lot of time on, on, uh, on computers and all of these things. Would it, the, what about the argument that is being made in the studio by, by our people here that it is Elon Musk himself who's produced this, who tests the waters? Because... He does that. What do you make of that? Well, in, in, I think it was October last year, there was mention made that he had plans of doing something of the sort. But the name of the robot which they were working on was called Optimus. This one was, was referred to as Catanella. And they were saying they had a time frame of about three to four years to start mass producing them. It's been only about seven months since, so it, it's not possible that they, they would have started so much heavy promotion because even Tesla has been known to fail. So I don't, I don't think they would push it that hard at the moment. That's my opinion. Okay, but then you are saying that it's okay for us to discuss because we should start looking at this as a possibility in the near future? The very near future, yes. I have, I have no doubt that other than Musk, there are other people working on prototypes of this sort. Let's go to, let, let me talk to Kweku now. Let, let's, let's get on to Kweku. Kweku, what do you think? Well, um, I, think, I don't think it's a, a good thing to do in the sense that um, the, there's a growing tendency of human beings to be individualistic and it leads to things like depression and, and others of the sorts. I think human touch is very important, but there's also the human rights angle, i.e. that is whether or not people are entitled to um, enjoy whatever pleasures they have, particularly if it is technology-wise and things of the sort. But I feel, as a Christian personally, it degrades the idea and the sanctity of marriage as an institution between two human beings and not um, a human being and a, and, and a robot. And nothing can replace human touch, human empathy, human feelings. 
Um, I think we should try as much as possible to remember well, and keep the limits. The, you, can get the human, you can get the human empathy from your mother, but uh, this is a wife. You can get a human empathy from your friend, but uh -huh. this is a wife. Well, there's, I, I don't know because I'm not married, but um, there's an idea, there is a thing that, um, it, it's wife, it's partnership, it's a spouse, right? I'm not a partner with my, my, with my mom or with my friend. You are a partner with your spouse. I mean, you last time even said that your wife came to the studio and she was interested in the Valentine's Day decorations, and it's a nice partnership. Even though I don't have it, mine is my books. So it, it's good to have have that 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 human. Okay, Antoinette, what what do you think? Um, okay, I would like to um, look at this from the sexuality angle, um, because you know in our. Um, society we have like the homosexuality the heterosexuality so this brings in the robosexuality aspect and looking at the way the lgbt um, lgbtqi plus is you know going on so i think this will also um come in in that aspect but aside that um i read that he said that he designed that with characteristics and personality of the woman he dreams of, which he has not seen in anybody else. So I feel like this has to do more with him than it has to do with the market that he's looking at. But I believe that for Tesla and SpaceX, they are both very big communities, um, sorry, companies that they might have conducted a feasibility study that they might have known that this would sell. But I think it's more personal to him than you know, it is to other people. But there might be people that might resonate with the reason he, you know, designed the robot. So that's where I'm looking at it from. The fact that it will, you know, promote robosexuality and the fact that it has it to... Will promote heterosexuality. Robosexuality. Robosexuality. Yes, yeah, sexually attracted, and um, being sexually attracted to robots and machines. Sexually attracted? Yeah, there is, there is robosexuality. Robosexuality. Yes, please. Is that new? No. <laughs> so there's homosexuality. There's, yeah, there's homosexuality. Being attracted to same sex. Yeah, there's heterosexuality. Hetero. Hetero. Hetero is the one we know. Yeah, yeah heteronormative yes. societies. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then we have robosexuality. Robo. Yes. Which is new. Yeah, which is what this would promote. Wow. So robosexuality and homosexuality, do you put them on the same level? Because for those, this for is those who say no to both. Are they because robosexuality, the robosexuality is more about attraction to machines, which robot robots fall under. Mm -hmm. So that is not homosexuality because it's not human. I understand that it's not homo, but I'm saying yeah. of the two, for those who are, are appalled by both, which one is the bigger sin? Bigger sin. Robo <laughs> or homo? This is not new. It's not the first time I've heard that. Uh, somebody who wants to create something. So in Japan, for a long time, they actually have an epidemic where, am I looking this way? Mm -hmm. Okay, they have an epidemic of, um, uh, should I say, antisocial behavior in the men. So what has happened for the longest time is, men have lost the ability to talk to women. They don't know how to approach women in public to get a girlfriend. So they stay in their houses and they buy these video games. It's like little AI where they, they talk with the video game and then the video game girlfriend responds to them. Because they're used to this for so long, they don't know how to talk to women. So now imagine we have this sort of thing here where already there's this narrative that masculinity has been reducing over the years. Now men are talking to their robot wives because they don't have the confidence to approach real women in, pub in public in real places. How, 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 how is our society going to look? Where instead of just going out and talking to a girl that you think is pretty, you rather just go buy a robot, which is not, let's, let's be realistic, it's not the same thing. I don't think that it's anything good. So you think it's bad? Yeah, I think okay. it's unnecessary. Let, let, let me see whether I can get a religious perspective. I'm going out there to catch Bello and, uh, uh -huh. so let me start with you, Abdul. Yes. What, what, what do you think? Um, well, so first of all, I'm a Muslim. Mm -hmm. And from the Muslim perspective, the marriage, or let me say, sexual relations between a man and a woman is clearly defined. And so, this is something that is way, way out of Islam in the first place. And secondly, the most important thing you have to understand, Paul, is that I'm looking at it from the social perspective. We are in a time where we are losing the connection between real people. And so if these things are coming up, uh, the family system is further going to be uh, degenerated and degraded at great length. And so that is why we have so many violent people on the streets because they do not have real human connection. And so I think this is one of the challenges. So basically, 
I don't think you can just go buy a robot and, you know, f satisfy your sexual urges. I think you But if somebody wants to do that, are you going to well, kill him? Well, if, if, no, not kill him. I mean... I, do you want to call that a crime? Uh, well, I don't, I, I'm not sure it's a crime. It cannot be a crime because, like a machine, you are free to do as you please with a machine of your choice. And what you buy with your money, you can do with what you have to do with it. But so it's not a crime, actually. Unless, of course, you violate the, uh, the agreement upon which you bought the robot. And that one, I'm sure they can uh, retrieve the robot from me. Let's find out from Bello. Uh, this is not uh, security and politics. But what do you think? Well, um, I think for me, I want to look at from this perspective. First, in Africa, one of the reasons we marry is for prestige. Marriage is too prestigious people. So if you decide to marry this robot, at a certain point in time, as an adult, you still lack that prestige that is accorded to every But we are person. trying to say to people that marriage is not prestige. It's a, it's a partnership. It's a, you can be fortunate to find a good partner. If you make it prestige, then those members of the society who are not married, you want to call them lower than those who are married? Well, that is an ideal perspective. But in reality, in African society, marriage comes from a form of prestige. Mm -hmm. And then also, even... For I both the man and the woman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then within, within this week, there was this hearing at the U.S. Senate, whereby Chad GTP CEO himself called for regulation. So there's a lot of uncertainty around AI also. So even with that, I'm still wondering how will this whole robot fit into the system? Will the regulation enhance the development of these sort of things? or would the purported or expected regulation still go a long way to undermine the reality of this kind of thing? So for me, a lot of uncertainty around it. And also, the fact that... Do you think it's a sin? Well, as a Muslim, it's against my religion, automatically. And then also... What is against your religion? I mean, this kind of marriage with this kind of thing, Islam clearly defines what marriage is, who you can marry. Well, he, he was the, it's not marriage. He's not going to perform a marriage ceremony. He's going to keep the robots as if it were a wife. They're not going to have any marriage ceremony. And in that case, it is because you are refusing to marry. And marriage in Islam itself is compulsory. So if one has a wife, but has a robot in his office, is that okay? Then you also be caught, do you have divided attention? Who do you pay attention to, your wife or the robot? Depend on. No, the robot is in his office like his computer, like the way your laptop is in your office or your, your, your desktop computer so, is in your office. So what's the sense of He the uses the robot for all of those things that the robot has been designed for as though the robot were a wife. But he has a wife. And he goes out with the wife, and he goes to church with his wife, or he goes to the mosque with his wife, he, he has children and all that. But he has this in his office. Is that a sin? This kind of sounds like artificial cheating. <laughs>